Welcome everyone to something I want to try and do for a very, very long time. That is hardcore modded survival. I am well aware that uh, Structure One has already done this and has survived actually quite a bit for modded hardcore. Um, but I'm doing this because I don't think he... Uh, went far enough and added it, um, a lot of chaotic things, and, um, well, okay, you'll understand why in a little bit, because I'm about to show you, uh, a couple of my first attempts, uh, <laughs> because they're kind of, I don't know how to explain it, uh, just show, I'll just show you for yourself. Ah, uh, yes. Night one of my first attempt. I got a little winter gift, and I thought it was going to be very, very rewarding. I thought I was going to get a diamond, maybe even a couple of golden apples. Um... Yeah, I accidentally... <laughs> oh, God! Good time, no! I spawned Kerbs into my, uh, world, and you can bet I pissed my pants as soon as I saw him spawn in. Uh, I was not long for this world after that. No, like, really, I actually thought I could take him on, and then, uh, yeah, I got hit right in the face of stupidity, and, uh, yeah, just burnt to death. I kind of actually sat here for a couple minutes just facing defeat. I was doing a lot better on, uh... My second attempt, I made it all the way to day five. You're so cute! And, uh, I actually was getting a pretty nice, uh, man cave going up. Though I, uh, had a bit of an explosive end to my fate, as you'll see in a little bit. And when I mean explosive, I actually mean explosive. I didn't even know that there was an explosive, oh, love you. uh, fish in the game that I accidentally killed. <laughs> Until I uh, noticed something was very, very wrong when I started to spark a little bit, and when I checked my uh, character stats, yeah. Hey, you're stinky and dirty. I literally sat here in confusion for ten minutes while the uh, girlfriend mob that I had uh, continued to insult me. You're so smart. But enough of the failed attempts. Let's go with the third attempt that went on for 100 days on my challenge. And after spawning in on the first day of my 100 days challenge, I realized that my first playthrough on the very first day of this mod pack was spent for an entire two hours. Uh, yeah, you can imagine how little I got done. <laughs> But really, though, all jokes aside, I went to my very first tree, cut it down, and finding some spicy first day loot by mistake, and then into the nearest cave I could find to make almost a full set of iron tools and armor, and then hunkered down for my first night. On the morning of day two, I exited the cave and saw that everything that was above me wanted to pick a fight with me, and it was not fun. <laughs> But after three minutes of running around trying to you. get the hostile creatures away from me, I found the perfect place to start building my fortress that will basically keep me alive for the rest of the series. This would have been an interesting one because this was the first time I encountered a jump, and it nearly killed me, and I was actually pretty terrified. On day three, it was raining, so I used what materials I had to expand the beginning of my base. It wasn't much, but at least I had some work. I found another cave system next to my main cave system, and uh, I linked them up, torched it up, and it is now mine. On the morning of day four, I saw that there was a slime above my house, and uh, its health was After a little bit of exploration, I did some infrastructure building into the cave, and it went to basically like this.
On day five, I got into Tinkers, and I got everything to make myself an obsidian pickaxe. Now I wouldn't have to waste precious iron on pickaxes that would break. On the morning of day six, I set out to find new land, so that way I could potentially grab more resources from it, and, and immediately, I found new land. My sole purpose out here was to grab a, as much cactus as I could, so that way I could make some minor things. That's what I exactly did. On the morning of day seven, I ran around and I found a village that had a decent bit of creature tools. I grabbed some, and then I started to head home. And after returning to base and getting a new sword from a weapon crate, I started to do a little bit of caving. I was actually down here for you know, a so couple good. days up to day 10, actually, but I will try to do it for the best part. You Your head roasting on a cinder fire, lovers burning off your nose. Afrid beasts trying to set you ablaze And the Eryx will freeze you till you're stone This was the first time using the random events mod that I had in this pack And uh, you're so I was actually cute. very concerned because of what my previous deaths were just completely random, so I was very concerned if I busted into flames, which I didn't, thankfully. Ah!
Yep, on day 11, I decided to play modded Minecraft on Christmas Eve because I had nothing better to do. This is yet again going to be another compilation of me trying to work out the front entrance, which is still not the greatest of what I would have hoped for, but it happened naturally, so I just went with it.
your nose Afrid beasts trying to set you ablaze and the Eric's will freeze you till you stay
day 19 was spent with me trying to figure out how Iguanas Tinker's Tweaks works, and it actually should not have taken me an entire day just for this. Day 20 was spent with me renovating the new addition into the main area of the base. I also forgot that this was a thing, so I know exactly how I'm going to get my main idea for the base done now. Day 20 was completely dedicated to the new storage system that I was building, and it came out pretty good. The rest of day 21 that I set aside was spent clearing up a little bit of space down below, so that way I could have some extra space for my enchanting and portal areas. And on day 22, while I was clearing out some extra space, I decided to try and get some scenic stuff done. You uh, better watch out, you better not cry. If you make a sound, he'll skin you alive. Satan Claus is coming to kill. <laughs> Oh, this was not a part of my plan. I'm uh, just gonna run back up to the surface now. Ow! Woo! Wait! Oh, well, that's great. On the morning of day that 23, I ran back into critter. the cave panicking because I nearly died again. I was still somehow alive. Scared, but alive. I instantly went into the caves to start carving out a much more safer passage from the entrance of the main cave system into the catacombs where all of the ravines are intersecting. And after a full day's work, it was complete. All I had to do was freeze the ceiling up by one, and it was perfect. I need to find where this dude is at, honestly. It's day 25, and I survived for a quarter of my challenge. I felt very happy, so I immediately went into caving. I didn't really find much. I just wanted to make sure everything was completely lit so I wouldn't have any dark spots. So I stay out of this massive cave. On day 26, I came down to see if there was a slime that spawned in my cave. Normally, they spawn inside the So while I was going into the caves, I heard the loud noises of a crew, and it just randomly attacked me. So I pretty much just panicked sat in this room and killed him. When I got into the main part of my base where I wanted to open it up a lot more and torch it up. I encountered that there were some mobs spawning in there as soon as I placed down the minor stream, so I had to torch it up. And it took a little bit. And I had enough time on day 26 to place down these instant survival gardens. Only one of them though, because it made a massive hole into my base just for farming, and I cannot wait until I can get into farming parts of this mud pack so that we can make this a whole dedicated area for farming. And after I logged on, I realized I had some extra resources so on me, cute. so I put in the two uranium pieces I had and the diamonds and emeralds that I had, and now I have a little bit more. I then went downstairs to collect my little trophy. I collected the trophy, but I also put a hole in my wall. The rest of day 27 and 28 were spent into the mines so that we can collect some new armor, because my iron armor was slowly starting to break. And on day 29, I made a full set of amethyst armor, the strongest armor that I could make at the time. It's day 30, and I'm mining up some resources so that I can get into Tinker Smeltery. I needed a lot of sand, some sandstone for base expansion, because I needed it a little bit more. And when I said I needed a little bit more, I found out that I had a lot more extra sand on a nearby peninsula. So, I had to collect it all. I lagged out halfway through day 30. It wasn't really great. Day 31, I'm still mining away at sand. On day 32, I started to make the required components to make the Tinker's Forge. It took a full day for the size I wanted, but I finally got it. A five high mega forge. And you could already guess what the first thing I was doing, I was making a sledgehammer on day 34. Days 35 and 36 were spent literally just smelting down all of the ores that I've saved up into more material.
materials that I needed. Day 37 was completely spent on using the double resource output that Tinker Smotheries give me, and I explored this quite a lot for the next couple days. Day 38, I wanted a little bit more resources, and that's what I did. I lied. I was in the caves for two whole days. Day 40, though, was a lot more productive. I made a table upgrade to use unlimited enchanting. You'll find out why in a little bit. Basically, this mod is better enchanting, and I could just place any item I want into the little slot, and I can enchant it for however much I want for a lot less of a cost. I could also constantly re-enchant it if I really wanted to, but I required bookcases, and I could also repair it with XP as well. On day 41, it was the first oh, day of you. winter, so I was gathering as much trees as I possibly could to survive through winter. After a quick trip in the mines, I got a couple of emeralds, <clears throat> diamonds, and some uranium. Day 43, I was back into the mines to try and grab some more uranium, but I'm going to quickly explain to you what uranium is. The useful purpose for uranium and titanium in the horsepawn mod is to make something like the ultimate uh, armor set and tools. Exactly. And they are in the entire mod pack, possibly number five on most powerful armor sets. Day 44, I made a lot of coal blocks because I had enough coal for it. I was back to the forge on day 45, gathering up all my materials that I needed. Day 46, I was attacked by creatures from the Doom franchise. I didn't even know that this was a thing. I'm like, I'm serious. I was not expecting to find Doom in Minecraft. This was a first for me. I went out exploring on day 47, and I found a lot of pretty useful things that I could later grab. I spent the entirety of day 48 farming out this little uh, scorpion and rat spawner, I think. I was getting a lot of uranium and titanium nuggets, so I had an idea for the future. I had enough adventuring. I was heading home on day 49. On day 50, I got three different types You're of so ant cute. Pills, so that way I could extend my uh, portal room a bit more. Day 51, I started to dig. You'll find out why much, much later. But on the same night, I found out how to make packed ice. Apparently a certain type of fire on ice managed to somehow pack it, which is very interesting because I never heard of this before. I guess oh, I was out for a little bit longer because I was continuing to dig on day 52. Day 53, I started to enchant my Amethyst Summer because I had enough XP for it. On day 54, I was wandering to a nearby island and I found something called a Crimson Cult worshipping a pillar. Day 55, I started to set up a flax farm for string because I had no other way to get string. Day 56, I started to place down some new cactus I got while adventuring. On the morning of day 57, I was harvesting ice that was on a little pond. While expanding in the caves, I came across um, something that was lobbing magma balls in a cave system. Day 59, it totally took me an entire day to realize that the large backpacks I had to research for first. Day 60, I stole a scorpion spawner and I was bringing it back for my project. The next day, I went back to quickly grab what loot I left on the floor, and I got some pretty decent stuff. And for that decent stuff, it was enough for me to make an ultimate bow. I then went down into the enchanting area and then enchanted the bow, and it would help me out in my next battle. And that next battle is taking over the mantis spawner, which would help free up a lot of free territory on my island. Their loot drops are actually pretty damn good. I might actually make a spawner out of them. And I sadly lost two companions in this fight for the island. I don't know why I did this, but on the next day, I went to the water dragon spawner to take on them. And I was victorious in my battle, and I came home with a water dragon spawner. I went into the chest, and I found an ultimate shovel. While looting after the battle, I found out that I had a decent bit of ultimate tools. The next couple days, I spent making a new expansion specifically for spawning farms. I finished it up on day 68, but it could use a little bit of uh, polish. I was fairly new at making these types of mob farms. I didn't really know exactly what I was doing. It took me a couple days. I was satisfied with it on day 70. It's gonna have to do for a while. On day 71, I found out that I had a couple of bubbles in this cases, and I opened them up, and I decided to play Fate, and I got an achievement for it.
This ring was the best out of all of them, so I was going to put it on, and I was going to keep it for the rest of the series. I spent the morning of day 72 lighting up the nearby area with torches just so that we can get some real estate up. And I spent the rest of the day of day 72 and the entirety of 73 making a apple cow farm. And you guess what I was going to do the next day? I went exploring on day 74 and I found some apple cows. I immediately made a portal and I started to drop them in. I'm excited! Now it was time to separate all the cows into their own little pen. And with the last normal golden apple in, I have done it. I can now start harvesting apples. It was time to do some expansion on the surface, so on day 75 I decided to clear out an entire hill. And then remove all the foliage for farming purposes. And on day 76 I created a village on my main island. I'm now no longer lonely on my little island. But I spent the entire night lighting up the entire area so that way they would not die. Next few days I did some exploring. It was fun. <laughs> After making a obsidian axe, I managed to get a silkworm from a little crook that I got. Day 80, a titan spawned on my little area, and I was not gonna have it. <laughs> Only 10 more to go. I also got my hatchet leveled up and I got a diamond modifier on it, which is pretty good. Day 81, I finally got my amazing pickaxe to Fortune 3. Day 82, while clearing out some trees, I found some pretty interesting loot. The next three days was entirely spent on clearing out a crypt for future use and but returning home, my amethyst boots broke, so it was time to replace them. I crafted up two stone armor stands, and you can guess what I did next. That's right, I put them right in my room, I was retiring the amethyst armor set to pick up the ultimate armor set. Day 88 was spent entirely preparing to go into the end. But I realized I had hardcore ender expansion, so I was just getting ready to open up the portal itself, but I was not prepared enough to go into it. Instead, the next couple days were preparing expansions for the next 200 days. It involved a lot of wood, none of which I could ever replenish. Day 93, I nearly died by this little trite at, while I was eating. This really got me scared because this was almost the end of the series. But I lived and spent the rest of 100 days preparing to do a little bit of colonization. I needed a lot of smooth stone in order to make stone bricks for walls of little cities that I had in these tiny little destiny orbs. I really wish I had a builder's wand. Would have made this a lot easier. I also fought an Emperor Scorpion, and this was the most intense boss battle I ever did on land. Oh god. But comparing this to the Mantises, I think I fared off a lot better with the ultimate gear that I had. I did a little bit of looting in the village, and I found out that I had a ton of Tinker's tools. I know what I'm going to be doing in the next 200 days, so I'll start. It also included Eggcraft, which I never really got into in any other path. It's a free irrigation system. It doesn't rain in the desert, so I don't know why they need it. Also, some free forge parts. 